Welcome to a new video of Pendulo Force. We want to go back to basics and explain finance for restaurants in a very easy way so everybody can understand. Today we're going to show how to do a stock take at the restaurant. As we mentioned in previous videos, the cost of goods sold is equals to initial stock plus purchases plus minus transfers or adjustments minus the final stock. We, can, we know that the gross profit is equal to the sales minus the cost of goods sold. So as we can see, the initial and final stock are going to have a big impact on our gross profit. So my goal for today is to show you how to do the stock take in a very easy and systematic way. This is the way I do it, but you can use similar spreadsheets that do the same job. This spreadsheet will show you what you have in your stock and then you can compare it with what you should have, which is something your EPO systems would be able to tell you. If there are discrepancies between what you have and what you should have, these discrepancies can show you issues at your restaurant, such as uh, theft, wastage, there's a new person that is not doing the, the prep properly, or they are over portioning. So in my spreadsheet, I have decided to divide my categories by ingredients, for example, meat, fish, etc. But you could also have different categories, uh, such as uh, grill, salads, uh, pastry, desserts, and uh, define these categories by sections in the restaurant, because in some places, the person in charge of every section is the one that does the stock take. So do whatever that works uh, best for you. Um, this is my way and it works well for me and my clients. So in my spreadsheet, I, I have um, meat, seafood and fish, uh, fruit and vegetables, dairy, dry store, vinegars and oils, chilled and frozen, finished recipes, which is the prep that we do in the restaurant, and then finished portions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open it so we're able to see all the ingredients. And when I will have the product, the name of the ingredient with the supplier and how they supply that ingredient. So this is in bags of one kilo, 1000 grams. That has a cost of 10 pounds. And the stock take unit is the way I'm going to count it. In this case, I'm going to count it as kilos, but sometimes you want to count it like a box or by unit. Then you just enter the amount that you have in stock. You just weight the fish, I have 3.5 kilos, and then the spreadsheet would tell us that's 35 pounds. And then we keep going with the rest of our stock. We're going to see now another example with uh, the seafood. So, for example, the Sivas, we do the stock take by units. So, here um, we have 20 Sivas fillets, so it gives us the total that we have in our stock, 24 pounds. And here we buy in bags of 200, packs of two, 235 grams, and in kilos it will be 1979. So, we don't have to change anything. We just have the formula there that it's saying how much it is if we do it by kilo. So just to give you another example uh, of the difference of the price per packing unit and like how you buy it and how you count it, we have the avocado and if we count it uh, per unit, it will have a cost uh, um, of 0 0.97. But if we count it by kilo, it will be 6.48. So you need to adapt the formula so it works just the way um, you want to be counting your stock at the restaurant. Uh, for some people, they don't use much avocado, so they will count by unit. And people that use loads, they may prefer to count even not by kilo, but by box. So we keep doing our stock take. We fill up uh, what we have in stock. The only thing we have to do is wait um, what we have in the scale and then just add it to the spreadsheet and the spreadsheet will give us the total. We also have to take into account the finished recipes, the batches that we do that we may have in stock and they will have an impact. 
and so it's good to add it. And we can ask uh, various miscellaneous, which this will be like salt, pepper, and other things that will have an impact on your stock. But you don't want to be counting all that every week because it's quite a standard thing to have. You usually have the same amounts. So then we have the total here, and we can see like in dry store we have a bit too much. The meat we may have a bit too little. Um, so this is the stock take we have for the week. And then we're able to compare with what we really should have. And if in any section um, we had any problems. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let us know. And if you don't want to miss any of our videos, please subscribe to our channel. See you soon.